Hi everyone. The video today is going to be on the third eye and again like all the other chakra videos I've done recently it's going to be based on healing your third eye but also understanding it and, and knowing how to use it correctly. Because I find uh, as you use your third eye or use your chakras in the proper way of developing it actually heals them automatically and you discover things about your chakras that maybe you never thought about okay what is like obviously the obvious thing is the visualizations of the spirit realm but what else does it do and i think this is what i'm really focused on because i've been discovering some pretty amazing things when i've been doing the chakras and things that you might not think about which then enhances the experience and understanding of each chakra in your body that's connected to your soul and it really does make a huge difference if you start to develop every aspect of your chakras and, and understand more about them so it actually gets you to use them in the way that they're supposed to be used. So I'm just going to take a deep breath in again, connect to the positive energy, let go of the negative energy. Bring in love, exhale chaos. It's always good to get used to doing that on a regular basis even if it's for a short time to get your body or soul to remember that again in your nose bring love energy in negative energy out and it's run through your 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 chakras down into the root into the core of the earth and then back again You do a few more deep breaths if you need to, and then go into normal silent breathing. But the speed is the same, intensity is subdued a bit. It's pretty. <laughs> The first thing I, I see is techno colors, like uh, very, very vibrant, ridiculous colors all over the place. And, and kind of cheesy disco music playing. <laughs> it's, I don't want to ask me why, but it's almost like they want you to go back into the late 60s, early 70s. And, and this is the type of vibe I'm getting. Vibrant colors, people dressed vibrantly. There's a lot of colors, a lot of... It's just the first thing I see. And somebody shuts the light off. And you're in a dark room. And then there's a flash of light. And there's things that you see in the room. Like a strobe light. You know, what a, if nobody knows what a strobe light is, look it up. It flashes and periodically you see things. And there's some pretty dark things in this room. And the people that were vibrant colors and happy and dancing around are now, say, you could say they're demons or demonic beings or dark beings. And if you flip it back into happy, love, like vibrant colors, one is a mirror of the other. And they're showing me a, a picture of the scene farther back. And I'm looking, and I'm looking directly in this line that separates the two. And above I see the party that's happening with beautiful vibrant colors and, and the demonic kind of darker scene underneath that's strobe lights. The thing above doesn't have strobe lights. It just have really bright, bright lights and colors. But in the bottom it's flashing, intermittent. And then you see a demon's face, don't see a demon's face, don't. It's like, really, it's a much darker scene. And I'm seeing this. And your third eye has a capability of seeing into the dark or the light realms. But it also has a capability of seeing in between. 
So I actually come to a place in between. And now above me is the party and below me is the party. But obviously, and I'm in between the two. And I see this very interesting, almost like a lava lamp, um, bulging of energy from each one of them. Some coming down, some going up. Actually, no, that's incorrect. I only see stuff going up. The dark energies are, are creating bubbles of energy that go up into the, the lighter realms. But I don't see the light realms interfering with the dark realms. It's interesting. And that's st something they wanted me to pay attention to. The dark realms are always reaching out to the light realms, but the light realms aren't reaching down into the dark realms. This is a normal state. Is it normal? This is the state of the world and how it works right now. Almost nobody sends light into the dark, but the dark is sending all kinds of stuff into the light. And this space in between is becoming narrower and narrower and narrower. So it's almost claustrophobic. So I actually, I take pillars of light and I start forcing this separation so I can breathe again. I could, it got to the point there was lots of space and then all this energy was coming up and the spaces became thinner and thinner and thinner. And now I have to force them apart again. And this is what I'm doing right now. And there's a being that doesn't like what I'm doing. So it, it's slamming on the bottom and th throwing energy up. But as I separate him, his energy doesn't make it because I create a barrier underneath my feet that stops the light or the dark energy from coming up into the light. Instead, I put pillars of light that force the separation between the two realms. And this being a slamming and really heavily trying to break three, through this barrier. So I intensify the brightness of the lights. But it's contained within a small area because this area is meant to stay gray, so to speak. And it's like a neutral area. But I'm, instead of the light or the darkness coming up, snuffing the light, I'm actually pulling light into the neutral area to push back the dark and then I create a barrier so now they're separated and I go down into the dark space which is weird because now all the energy that was going up into the the light is now being forced back into the actual uh, the darkness. So now this whole area is full of like lava light, like lava type bulbs of dark energy that are color, but they're really dark, dark colors, like dark purples and dark pinks. And it's almost like they're black, but there are slight variations of color to them. Like very dark red. I'm when I say dark, I'm almost like black red, like black pink. Like it's very, 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 very dark. It's almost if you weren't paying attention, you would see that it was only black, but then you would see there's a slight tinge of a certain color. And now this place is filling with this, so they they have to ingest this energy, which infuriates them even more. And there was a, there was a, 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 you could say a being that was very much in charge of actually sending this energy upward is now being devoured by these beings because they can't deal with digesting their own filth. So they tear apart the being that was creating this lava lamp type energy. And they just tear the shreds and eat every part of it. And now they're all fat. And, and like lying down and and like burping and f big huge bellies hmm. 
there's an interesting part here that happens when this happens there's like something opens up and there's a bunch of insects that come in here and eat every single one of these beings alive and then it, they, these insects get fat and then the floor opens up and all these bugs fall down into a dark space a dark pit they fall really 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 far down and now there's a massive pit that goes really deep 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 down into the darkness and this once close party room is now gone it doesn't exist anymore hmm they go down, 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 down. They keep going downward. It's like, it, it is really, it feels like an endless pit. And when you get this energy, it isn't real. There's no such thing as an endless pit. It's a manipulation of energy. And as your third eye, you have to identify what is real and what isn't. And you start to, your heart tells you that this is space is not real. You see it as a dark, endless pit, but your heart is telling you, wait a second, something isn't right here. Something's not right. So I spin a, 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 like a, a pillar of light into the air and I slam it down into the ground like with lightning and it shatters the mirror that is here. And I'm in a place with lava, lava flows. And there's a really, 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 really distinctive, disgusting smell everywhere. It comes, it's coming from that direction and as your third eye sees this you feel it, you sense it you smell it and you know it's coming from that direction so you follow and you go that direction because your heart is telling you that is the right way to go so i, I fly to that direction and there's a very very disturbing scene here there's many layers of crucifixes that are upside down and people are being burnt alive. And then there's like a, a, f a flow of wind, so to speak, that goes down and into the valley, which is the smell you're smelling is burnt flesh. It's disgusting. It stinks. It's, and the people are still alive and they're screaming. And there is a barrier here that as I get close to this it's like this invisible barrier above my head and it's like there's a big loud like no inside my mind that's no I can't go any further but there's not really any barrier that you cannot bypass it's almost like a test of your ego to see whether or not you can move forward it's a test of your fear like there's nothing here that is going to stop me from going to where I need to go you have to believe that. So there is a way around this. Even if it's minute to small of an atom, you'll still be able to pass through it. Because we're spirit. And, and this is the thing that when we use our third eye, we're using the spirit of ourselves. There's a crack in, in a, one part that I'm able to go through. And as I'm going through, the crack starts to seal itself. And I, again, put a, put something like a light pillar, very, very small, because this is a very small crack. And I'm just like mist, and I go through this, go through this crack before it closes. And then it breaks the pillar of light, and it's, you could say that I'm sealed in this other place, but I could leave at any time, any time, just by thinking about it. Just simply just leave. You know, you're not you never trapped anywhere. Remember that. You cannot get trapped. It's only your belief that you're trapped that is when you're trapped. The loud sound 
It's interesting because if you're in a physical form, your ears would bleed, and that's an understanding of what type of energy this is. The screaming is so loud and so pitching, and my ears would bleed, my eyes would bleed. So I just override that as it, I'm a spirit. I don't have to allow that to affect me that way. So then I keep rising upward. And there, I, this is very, very, very disturbing. I'm not quite sure why they're showing me this, but these beings are desperately wanting help. As I go by them, you're almost like their eyes themselves are coming out of their heads to try to get me to, because that's the only thing that can be, can, can be moved is their eyes. And they literally pop out of their heads to get with the desperation of setting them free. The pain is in, insanely overwhelming. But I'm not meant to help these beings at this time. I'm meant to keep going upward. It's hard to ignore something that's so, that feels like it needs your help. Not feel. See, visually looks like it needs my help, but your heart is going to tell you whether or not you, to help them or not, or move on. And moving on isn't abandoning them, it's going to where they need to go to, to so they can be really set free. So you have to follow your intuition, your heart, your understanding of what to do next, not think what to do. Because you're thinking, oh, I should help these guys. No. You have to listen to your heart. You need to move upward. Because that's what my heart is telling me to do. And there's a huge mouth of lava that's flowing. There's a mouth open and lava's coming out and it's burning these beings. And it's it's excruciating the smell, the the sound. Hmm. The pleas for help. Hmm. And I reach the mouth of this being and I go into its mouth and I go up into its brain. And the brain itself is is like a city, actually. And it's like a, an ass. It's just such a weird city, though. It's like it looks like a brain, but it, things are living in it. It's full of living things. And in the very center of this brain, there is an energy core. And it's giving off red energy everywhere. And it's, but the energy itself is also has a, has a black outline around it, like black cracks through it. And so the energy flows outward, but it's flowing outward with these black cracks. If these black cracks touch you, they're excruciatingly, it's like they will literally just, dis, they will eat you alive with just a simple touch. But a lot, as a spirit, these will not eat you alive. But this is the energy that's coming from them. They're going to destroy you. They're going to eat you alive. You will not survive. And the red is just pure terror. It's going to torture you in the most horrible, fine way possible. So the the red energy is, is pouring out fear, rage, everything you could possibly imagine to get you distracted from when the black hits you and then the black will literally torture you to death and then bring you back to life fear from the red destroy you when the black line hits you again it's a repetitive cycle that never ends and this is the energy that's coming out of this thing so i put a spear very long spear from my heart i put a pillar of light which is shaped like a spear and I'm to stick it into the center, through the side of this, all the way through. So I, I reach out and I slam this through the center, and I separate myself into two, and I create a pillar that goes down on into the ground on both sides. So it creates like a, a U. Hmm. 
and then we put an arch from the from the the two pillars up all the way around the heart back into the other side and then I do the same thing underneath all the way around so it creates like an oval with these two pillars and now I actually take it and I and I spin it and it starts to spin clockwise and it starts to build up a very powerful light energy and I see myself back where I was looking at both of the, of the party and the other party underneath and what I see is the party is no longer going in the dark but I see a spinning light and that spinning light is getting brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter and the beings that were attached to the crosses upside down are let go and they burn into the lava but they're in, they're but they get absorbed into the light that's now like it looks like a spherical light they get absorbed into that light and the light gets brighter and brighter and brighter and all the beings that were in this realm are now being set free and being pulled into this sphere of light and the beings at the top that were parting stop and they touch the ground and they feel something different something has changed instead of partying they actually start to go on their hands and knees and start to pray and the sphere gets brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter till it breaks through the barrier between the barriers the gray and it rises up into the light and it, these beings that were praying also become part of the light and it and this goes up all the way and there's a like a vortex that opens up and these beings get pulled up into this vortex and disappear and the silence for a second and then a ma massive angel appears in the background between both realms and the gray and he breathes in and pulls everything in until there's nothing left except a white blank space And he plants a seed, a flower, one flower that grows into a child, a, very, a baby. And the baby starts to cry. And when the baby cries, there's a drop of tear that hits the floor and a woman appears and, and, and basically takes the baby in her arms and starts to nurture the baby. And then I, seen, I see a scene of a woman on a rocking chair nursing a baby. And everything is silent. The baby is silent, the mother is silent. There's, even the rocking of the chair makes no sound. But there's an energy that forms between the woman and the child that gets very bright and the angel reaches down and opens its hand and a ball of light goes into the hand like an orb of light comes from the woman and the child and he's holding that into her hand and he blows it into my third eye and it makes me blink for a second and it goes down to the core of my heart and I just stand there like it's like there's a t my own tear comes out and hits the ground and another child is born and a woman the cycle changes and he does this to every person that watches this video to connect your third eye to your heart and the tear which creates another person and another person so the more people that watch this video the more people that experience this now their tear will be placed and somebody else will be able to experience it a new life 
a new a new form of love that is shared with everyone who watches this video. And the angel smiles at me and actually gives me a big hug. And he gives everyone a hug that watches this video or chooses to be part of this experience. And simply says, without the heart, there is no third eye. Without the love of a woman and a child, there is no life. That's what I experienced. Hmm. Makes you think, doesn't it? It's what <laughs> I want to say. Because it is extraordinarily beautiful to experience that. And I think I'm just going to leave that there just to give the people something to think about. Thank you very much, everyone. If you wish to do a video with me, you can visit my website at almondrossawakening.com. Please like and share and comment. It's always appreciated. And again, thank you very much and have a wonderful day.